In our last segment, we learned how this roofing project started with a hailstorm and has now evolved into a complete energy efficiency remodel with air sealing, new insulation, and the addition of three sun tunnels and a skylight. Now let's once again meet up with our remodeling consultant, Andy Lindis, to learn more about roof flashing and some of the other work being done on this project. Well, you know, Andy, with all the different shows we've done on roofing, one of the things that sticks in my mind is the importance of flashing. And as I recall, this is a crucial area that is sometimes overlooked. Yeah, you know, we, we've talked before. Everybody can get the same shingle. But it's the detail stuff that we do that really sets us apart. Like, for instance, here. I know when I get into attics, old construction like this, built in the 70s, it's going to be 2 by 4 construction on the sidewalls. That's an excellent source of heat escaping onto the roof, usually ice dams. And when ice dams occur in situations like this, it leaks. Because, if you notice, what they used to do in this area was just run tar paper up the wall and then put the shingle tins over the top of that. Feel how brittle that, that is. It's just falling apart here. And again, you're saying that there's a little bit of insulation, if any at all, because of the ear of the construction. But where this roof meets it, that's a perfect area for moisture to get in? It is, and this is why we want to create a drainage plane. What we did is we cut out six inches of the old cedar siding, and we're gonna take our ice and water shield, run it behind the old cedar siding, tuck it behind there, and take our shingle tins right over the top so we can make a nice step flashing, gonna give us a drainage plane, so even if there is an ice dam in this area, you'll never have to worry about it leaking. Again, peace of mind for the homeowner. Now, this is old cedar siding, it must have been a concern for the homeowners when you said you're actually going to cut out five or six inches. You know, they were worried about it. And normally what we use is an LP smart side trim board. Sure. But in getting a talk to the homeowners, they just had the house refinished with an acrylic stain. My experience, that acrylic stain doesn't take to some of those composite boards. So we're actually going to replace it with a new cedar board that we're going to pre-finish on the ground before we install it. And again, cedar nature's wonders it's rot resistant so they're not gonna have to worry about that but what i like to hear there is that's the voice of experience from an experienced contractor i say that all the time in shows make sure you do your homework hire someone who's experienced with the different products you're going to get your best end result and these homeowners by the sound of it aren't going to have to worry about longevity with this system nor are they going to have to worry about it ever leaking again in my experience it's the little things like that that lead to a happy customer well let's continue on down a couple different areas i know that there's some important flashings that need to be installed Now, I know in the past you said a very crucial area of any roof is the valley. And although it's not flashing that we're looking at, we're looking at ice and water shield, it's still very important. Yeah, the first thing we want to do before we put down our valley tin is put down one row of ice and water shield. As you can see, this is done perfectly. If, if the valley tin ever fails, we got ice and water shield as a drainage plane that's going to put it out. But we don't stop there. Once the valley tin is put down, we're going to add two more rows of ice and water shield. So essentially, it's nine feet wide in the valleys, wow. which is one of your biggest culprits of ice dams. And again, this ice and water shield is an amazing product. It really sticks well, and you're not going to have to worry about any water, even in the unlikely event that it enters. It's still going to be flushed right off. Yeah, what I love about the products from GAF is this particular ice and water shield is going to actually have to take heat to activate. So as you put it on, you can adjust it and get it laying flat perfectly without it having being too tacky. And as you'll see throughout the day, as the sun sets on this, you want it to come back up, you're going to have to bring the roof deck with it. Now some other areas of importance when it comes to flashing, I assume the, like a chimney, a plumbing penetration, anything like that? We have a lot of penetrations on this roof. We got some brown vents we have to deal with. We have our heating stacks, our plumbing stacks. All of those have flashing kits that go on them. Like I told you before, we're installing three sun tunnel skylights. Sure. So we're gonna have to put flashing and ice and water shield around. A brand new skylight, we're gonna install a new flashing kit. You know, I have a Velux skylight that's 25 years old, because we installed it, it's never leaked a single time in that 25 years. Sure, again, in shows past, we've stressed how you can have the best products in the world, but if they're not installed properly, you're not gonna be happy with them and you're not gonna get the longevity. No, another little thing that we do, you notice over here, we have what we call our pre-flashing on for the gutters. We put this piece of metal on, knowing that later on we're gonna be here to install the leaf guard and put up another drip cap right there, but we want one that the ice and water shield attaches to and adheres to. This way, should water ever get behind the gutter system or underneath the roofing system, when it gets here, it's kicked out over the top of the fascia board, will never rot anything out. 
Okay, now what about the roof vents themselves? Before we saw that they had the old turtle vents and you were taking care of those in a safe manner, getting rid of them, sealing them up with those plugs. How are you gonna vent this place now? Now we're gonna cut in a ridge vent. And we use the GAF ridge venting that even in a driving rain, it'll never leak. So we gotta cut out the existing sheeting, put up our ice and water shield, cut that out, install the shingles, then we'll put the ridge vent over the top of that, cap that off, it's gonna look awesome. It's gonna be about four times the amount of venting that they have on the house right now. And most importantly, when you're talking about a roof that's gonna last 50 years, you need the vents to last 50 years. You need the ice and water shield to last 50 years. The whole roof needs to be good for that longevity. It really is a complete system. And I just wanna to quickly touch on this opening over here. You said this is gonna be a Velux skylight. Yep. Is this what you're referring to before is how there's areas of the homes you didn't have access to, but now that you do have access, because this is a rather large opening, you can do a thorough inspection of it? Yeah, like I told you, these are really skilled guys, and they have to be. We tore this up, we know that the old porch roof is two foot on center, the actual roofing is 16 inches on center, so we gotta move this truss over in order to install the skylight, and then when my guy got inside the attic here, he noticed the house is actually cantilevered into the porch area a little bit, crawled up underneath there and saw this, what the heck? You know, that used to be pink. What that <laughs> means is this old pink insulation was acting like a filter in the house. All of that airflow coming here turned that black. And when you talk about an area that has ice dams, more than likely that's what's causing it. So we're going to do a little change up here. We're going to spray foam that area, attic air seal it, insulate it, so they'll never have to worry about that air loss ever again. What a great example of how fiberglass insulation does a great job insulating, but it doesn't stop airflow. It really filters it. And what you guys are doing is going to the extra mile to seal all the attic penetrations. Yeah. So they're not gonna have to worry about this and fiberglass can do what it's meant to do and that's keep the heat in the house. It's a difference in materials. Say if this is a home that I wasn't going to be spray foaming entirely, sure. I would put cellulose on because that stops the airflow a little bit more. Okay. But when I'm putting spray foam on a house, I can use, I'll blow in fiberglass over the top because I can get to the desired R value with less inches and I can get to the right spaces. This is such a great project to show how a true professional company can handle all the different aspects of a home remodeling because the house really does act as a system as I've learned from you in the past. And if you go and change something in one area, you might be affecting another area. And that really is where it comes back to all your knowledge, your experience, and all the diagnostic tools that you guys use. Yeah, you know, we're not fly by night guys. I'm gonna be around in 30 years. I wanna make sure stuff I did 30 years ago never comes back to haunt us.